Uh, let me introduce uh, Professor Kyusuk Cho, uh, who is the current president of uh, KSELS. Uh, Professor Che is a world-renowned scholar who had accomplished uh, so much achievement in the, in the field of laparoscopic and robotic uh, colorectal surgery. Uh, let me briefly introduce his CV. Uh, he graduated the School of Medicine at uh, Gyeongbuk National University and completed the surgical residency at the same uh, university. He received a, a degree of a PhD at the same university and uh, pursued a research fellowship for cancer genetics at Cancer Research UK Oxford. And uh, he uh, organized the MIS training and research center at Gyeongbuk National University Hospital. And he's an early pioneer of robotic correctile surgery and uh, so much achievement uh, he uh, accomplished. And uh, many outstanding achievements had led him to win uh, many prizes, prizes, including Carstros Award from EAES. At present, he is a professor of uh, uh, Gyeongbuk uh, uh, National University Hospital. His main interests are MIS and robotic surgery for colorectal cancer. Uh, today, uh, uh, he will. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Today, uh, he will uh, uh, show uh, the lecture title is uh, uh, yeah. MIS in Correctal Cancer. Uh, look back to uh, look forward. Uh, Professor Cho, please. Thank you, thank you very much for kind the introduction. And uh, it was a great honor for me to serve a year as the president of KSELS. And I would like to thank the organizing committee for giving me the opportunity to share my personal uh, history of minimal invasive surgery for colorectal cancer during the last uh, 28 years. So this is my disclosures. I started my first laparoscopy colectomy in 1994 in a very small communal hospital. I started with the right hand colectomy, small series of APR and lower anterior section. At that time, already uh, in the West, uh, early 1990, there several pioneers reported the colectomies by laparoscopic approaches. The several years later, we had a great momentum to found the Korean Laparoscopic Colorectal Surgery Study Group, which was uh, inaugurated in the 2000, year of 2000, uh, the November. The, we, uh, we invited the chairman, Jun Gi Gim. He is uh, uh, still with us here. At that time, we started a very small group. It's only 12 members started to do. And three years later, uh, the acting members increased up to 42. And very uh, incidentally, we had the good news from, uh, from the SAGES Cost Study Group showed similar uh, long-term outcomes. So, after three years more, explosively laparoscopic uh, surgery the, the spread out whole countries with their active members more than 183. I believe this, the Korean laparoscopic colorectal surgery study group was the, the uh, cornerstone of our current uh, laparoscopic colorectal surgery. As a result, if you look at the laparoscopic penetration in colorectal cancer surgery with the three major procedures, which are anterior and lower anterior resection and right hand colectomy, is more than 80% in the year of 2018. Now it, it, it's more increasing. 
but this is a great improvement and greater uh, you know, advancement in the minimal invasive surgery in Korea. Uh, when you look at uh, rectal cancer and the colon cancer separately, rectal cancer is more than 81% we did laparoscopic approach and 77% for colon cancer by laparoscopic approach. However, initially, in the previous time, we had a struggling, also we had a very hard time to overcome the learning curve. It was very steep. And if you look at the initial phase of my experiences, there, it took her more than three, four, even five hours for doing the, the right hemicolectomy and anterior even longer in the lower anterior resection. But when you look at the last part, we can finish at the most two hours. We can finish within the two hours, we can finish all the right hemicolectomies and anterior and low, even lower anterior section. Now we are very competent. So this means at the moment, laparoscopic approach for treatment of colorectal surgery is called the standard already. So this is our long-term result of laparoscopy versus open surgery comparative studies. And what we found is very interesting. Operation time is even shorter in the laparoscopic group compared to the open surgery group, which means you know, making incision and closing incision for open surgery, it took a time. In our series, the laparoscopic surgery is a shorter even uh, in operation time. And the length of stay and recovery from the surgery was a shortened. And also the uh, local recurrences, disease-free and overall survivors are quite similar. This is quite similar study, uh, the results uh, compared to the results from the other big uh, clinical trials. And, and we did the uh, multi-center uh, in multi-center uh, study in collaborating with the uh, Japanese uh, centers for intersphincter resection, which is more uh, scale demanding procedures. And also we found that the result showed quite uh, the encouraging blood loss was minimal and no transfusion. And we delivered the specimen through the anus most of cases. And as a result, the recovery from surgery is quite quicker than open surgery. Um, pathologic findings are similar between the two groups, and the post-operative morbidities are similar, but quite acceptable. And long-term results is not wrong, but the intermediate uh, results showed quite encouraging. Disease-free overall survivors are uh, similar between the two groups. So as a, uh, we accumulate our experiences, we move toward to extend our indication for more complex and extensive diseases such as uh, obstructing colon cancer, multi-organ dissection, and even cytoreductive surgery with uh, interpretonal chemotherapy and paraortic and lateral pelvic node dissection. We changed our policy to treat uh, obstructing colon cancer from the interoperative colonic lavage to uh, stent first and followed by laparoscopic colon dissection. And we found that the recovery was quicker and hospital stay was uh, shorter and the post-operative com complication was uh, significantly less in the laparoscopic uh, procedure compared to the open lavage group. But the one adverse finding was uh, identified, which is a higher rate of perineural invasion in stent and laparoscopic surgery group, because I think the, this is a continuous uh, pressure to the tumor by the stent. But, the, um, uh, but the fortunately, this advanced uh, finding did not translated into the uh, poor over, uh, overall survival. And more ambitiously, we uh, tried to do, we attempted to do 
the laparoscopic multi-organ dissection with a combination of colon and rectal cancer surgery. And when we uh, did combined surgery with the right hemicolectomy and low NT dissection, even after combining our uh, organ dissection, the conversion to open surgery is minimal and the complication did not increase too much. That means the our laparoscopic multi-organ dissection is quite uh, safe and feasible. And the rotor pelvic nose, which is a very uh, demanding procedure after preoperative CCLT, we try to do laparoscopic removal of the total uh, pelvic side wall, uh, the lymphadenectomy. And we reported initial 16 cases uh, first time and uh, we reported 12.5% local is quite, quite high, but when you're considering very advanced tumor, it was uh, quite acceptable. And we tried the more ambitious project to do laparoscopic cytoreductive surgery for uh, limited peritoneal carcinomatosis with colon cancers. And what we found is more synchronous uh, peritoneal metastasis in the laparoscopic group compared to the open surgery group and the less disease extent. Uh, but we achieved completeness of uh, cytoreductive uh, surgery in, uh, uh, in laparoscopic surgery more than 86% and the open surgery group 79% we achieved the R0 resection. And the post-operative complications are far less in the laparoscopic approaches. And this is the survival. We concluded that the survival is related to disease extent and completeness of surgery, not to the approach of procedure, which means the laparoscopic surgery can play a role, important role, in treating selective cases of uh, peritoneal carcinomatosis. And uh, paraeolytic lymph node, also we, we did the minimally invasive approach. When patients showed minimum or limited number of infected uh, paraeolytic lymph node, we can save the patient more than 50%. So this is quite an uh, important message to, we can extend, extend our indication to very complex cases. On the other hand, we're trying to do less, less invasive surgery, such as a single port or single incision surgery or natural orifice specimen extraction through the transanal and transvaginal approaches. Single incision laparoscopic surgery is good for cosmesis. We can conceal the wound, which results in almost a scarish surgery. However, this is not ergonomic and very uncomfortable for surgeon and, uh, and assistant. So we, we, we was keep asking to ourselves, what is the other option to avoid reduced abdominal surgery? We found that the natural oil piece specimen the extraction may be the answer to minimize the abdominal wall incision simultaneously with not compromise laparoscopic competence. So we, we try to do the, the dose with the uh, right hem colectomy in female patient, and we showed the operation time is a little longer, but the uh, pain score and cosmetic result and hospital stay was shorter in nose group compared to conventional laparoscopic surgery group. And look at the pain score uh, one day after and three days after surgery is uh, significantly less in the uh, nose group compared to the conventional laparoscopic surgery group. And pathologic findings are quite identical between two groups. And we followed up these patients for a long time and we concluded that 
our long-term result in terms of the overall survival was quite similar between the two groups. So it can enhance the recovery and a similar long-term result with a, a, a transvaginal uh, specimen extraction. Finally, 2007, December, Nova has come to my unit, and we tried to do small randomized clinical trial for right hem colectomy, and we concluded that there is no significant clinical benefit to justify the great cost of a robotic system. So we quit doing any colon surgery by uh, robotically. So we moved to, we focused on only rectal cancer for uh, robotic approaches. Uh, thanks to the hand suturing uh, technique of the robot, initially we removed the sperm through the anus and make a pursing shoes intercorporeally and make end-to-end -end osmosis with the only single use of circular staple, uh, which uh, reduced or sometimes avoid abdominal incision. And we compared laparoscopic versus uh, the, oh, the uh, robotic surgery. Operation time is uh, uh, almost 40 minutes longer in the uh, robotic group compared to the laparoscopic. But uh, we saved uh, more uh, the anus in the robotic group compared to the uh, laparoscopic surgery group. And, but the, uh, the recovery was quite similar and pathology finding in terms of uh, margins distally and circumferentially is almost similar between the two groups. And we extended our study in collaboration with the Korean laparoscopic colorectal surgery study group for intersphincter dissection in comparison with robot versus laparoscopy. We concluded that also the robotic ISR has no reasonable, uh, no the, the uh, advantages over the laparoscopy. And currently it's too expensive, so we do not uh, recommend uh, routinely for this uh, robotic approach for uh, ISR. The long-term results are quite similar between the two groups. And when you look at our institutional results of a urinary and erectile function for men after TME uh, with the robot versus laparoscopy, the voiding functions are similar, but in male patient, erectile function uh, six months after surgery, which is uh, well preserved in robotic group compared to the uh, laparoscopic surgery group. But uh, after 12 months later, these differences become equal. It's not, uh, not different between the two groups. So recently, we published the final uh, long-term result of a robotic surgery. We found a very interesting one. The long-term results in both group, robot versus laparoscopy, showed very similar oncologic outcomes. But the robot may be beneficial to a certain group of advanced rectal cancer with a poor response to neoadjuvant chemo radiation. As you can see in this slide, when patient received the preoperative CCLT, but poor response, still pathologic T3, T4 patient, we reduced distant metastasis in the robotic group compared to the laparoscopic surgery group significantly. And another long-term clinical outcomes on the rotor pelvic node dissection with the robot versus uh, the laparoscopy, we also showed a favorable long-term overall survival in the robotic group compared to the laparoscopic surgery group. You can see here significant uh, better outcomes in the, uh, in the robotic group compared to the laparoscopic surgery group. We conducted uh, randomized clinical trials, which is called a uh, COLA trial. Unfortunately, this trial was prematurely terminated, but finally we included 150 in the robotic group and 144 in the laparoscopic surgery group. We are preparing for 
the publication of these the, the studies, our primary endpoint completeness of TME showed actually uh, similar between two groups, which is uh, the negative study for uh, this trial. However, in a subset of low rectal cancer, the CRM positivity is far less in the robotic group compared to the laparoscopic surgery group. And the mobility is almost similar between two groups and the quality of surgery and bowel function and the erectile function for men and uh, voiding uh, function for both genders are quite similar between the two groups. Let me show you the, our current status of colorectal cancer surgery in our unit. The, patient, the, the cases are uh, gradually increasing. The last year we did primary colon cancer surgery, more than 850 uh, cases. It's uh, increasing. And the, among the, these surgical uh, uh, approaches, mainly more than 95% we did minimally invasive surgery. Among these minimally invasive surgery, 80% are still laparoscopic surgery. Only 20 to 30 percent we did the robotic approach. Especially robotic approach, after uh, the introduction of the uh, Da Vinci SP system last year uh, for the rectal cancer, we did more than 40 percent of patients by uh, robotic approaches. But all these robotic approaches are applied to very complicated patient ISR and lateral pelvic node dissections are major indications. So I was uh, keep thinking about what is the future surgery. Maybe in my, in my humble opinion, future surgery will have three key components, see better and do better and know better. You know, vision is very important uh, aspect in the surgery. So when we look back, our initial laparoscopic surgery, the monitor resolution is terribly poor. We were very struggling to find out which is which, but now is we have a 4K, even 3D, 8K, you know, even fluorescence technology we have. So vision is uh, the improved. The, our quality of surgery also improved. We know that the fluorescence guided lymphadenectomy is quite helpful. And we reported some of the results in various uh, fields of uh, colorectal surgery with the application of uh, fluorescence. But this currently available fluorescent ICG is not the cancer specific. We need cancer specific ICG. So Eventual goal is to see the invisible, to see the visible, not to see the visible. So if we conjugate these, uh, the fluorescence protein onto the uh, target tumor cells, actually we can see the tumor cells intercorporeally. During the surgery, you can see tumor emboli with the fluorescence you can see the circulating tumor cells here. So this is our future of uh, cancer surgery. And also the navigation surgery is around us. You can see the, 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 the similar technology in our booth, exhibition booth, image guided, augmented. Reality is quite good to, to uh, to see the invisible tumor, for example, so hepatoma or hepatic metastasis, with a combination of 3D reconstruction and uh, the, the augmentation, you can see it interoperatively, uh, uh, quite uh, accurately see the, the tumors. So what is so next way to do better. Uh, my answer is robotic surgery is the way uh, to go. 
So robot is already everywhere. You can see the uh, autopilots, uh, the navigation systems, and even the car manufacturing uh, area. There is nobody around the, the manufactured cars. The, all the robot actually replace the human beings. When we go back to 20 years ago, we have a very primitive type of robot. It's only handled the camera system. This became, several years later, became the Da Vinci system. So this evolution of robot maybe move forward to uh, more freedom of motion and miniaturization. The currently we have uh, the new system of Da Vinci SP system. The, we developed SP lectal resection procedures. Okay. The, the reason why we chose the SP system is a small incision can make a small difference in terms of pain and recovery. And also we do, we can do totally robotic with a multi-quadrant approach with a single docking and single incision. So this is the port setup. We can do the TME as, a, uh, uh, as a effectively as a, we do multi-port robotic approach. Even lateral pelvic node dissection, we can do it. We uh, reported our uh, the initial experiences of SP system. So these are important, but the more important thing is how we do, how we know better. Uh, this our extension of our knowledge. Maybe the artificial intelligence may help us to know better, even uh, uh, beyond our imagination. So AI, combination of this AI and the robot is the future surgery and the future uh, uh, aspect of uh, any kind of uh, industry. This is one example. This is a robot, but the communicable to the human beings. This, they, they, you know, they analyzed all their, uh, the, the movement of human beings that they just, just uh, uh, replace the human uh, beings in the uh, near future. Uh, one of the futurists, Ray Kruzbel, already said that according to by reverse engineering of human brain system, we could identify the mechanism of human natural neural network. Even as you want or not, it doesn't matter. Singularity will come soon. We have only 20, min 20 years left to have an AI and their AI plus robot. So AI will improve human life, but we have to consider that. We, we do concern the, the dark side of AI. So huge colorectal cancer surgery definitely will be improved, I believe and well standardized. This means there will be no expert at all in the future. Everybody can do the, the best surgery uh, by helping the AI and the robot. I'm not sure that we can be happy or unhappy <laughs> with this, but uh, it doesn't matter as you want or not, the future will come to us. So that is the reason why we had a big moment to change ourselves to move forward together. We decided to change our society name to Korean Society of Endolaparoscopic and the Robotic Surgery. We tried to embrace the robotic surgery into our society. So dear members and colleagues, Sir, I I'd like to ask you, ask yourself, are you ready to change? If you are ready to change, please uh, move forward together. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> okay.
Thank you, uh, thank you, Professor Choi. Uh, you showed many very, very uh, great achievement for us. Yeah, Professor shows uh, the history of uh, correctal surgery, including laparoscopic uh, and uh, nose and robotic surgery, and also uh, show us the future future surgery. Uh, he showed, uh, regretfully, uh, this is a presidential lecture, and uh, it is a tradition not to ask any question. So if you have any question, uh, please contact him directly, personally. <laughs> Thank uh, you. <laughs> so uh, he's a, a real a leader of uh, our uh, KS, uh, KS ERS, but we will change it, KS ERS. And, uh, he uh, devoted as a president one year for us, and he showed uh, uh, great leadership and uh, may, so many uh, devotion. So uh, please give him again a big applause. <laughs> so I'd like to close this session. Thank you.